Oh yeah, you got the merch on again. Thank you. I should be wearing the merch as well. I just finished my self tape, and so I'm wearing this professional looking ass shirt. It looks good. It's very good. Thank you. It's a great looking hoodie you got there, though. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh god. Should we get started then? Yeah, let's do it. Let's yeah. pod a cast of a generation. <laughs> it's the podcast of a generation with me, Miles Dobson. And this week's guest, he's a content creator, artist, streamer, and avid water drinker, Jakey Boyarts. Alright. Hi Jake. Welcome Hi. to the show. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> Thank you for this. having me. Um, uh, the the w which I've been delightfully informed I should be calling the Miles Podson. <laughs> That's very good. That's I like that. Don't, en don't encourage Miles that. Miles Podson. Miles Podson. That's me. I'm Miles Podson, and welcome to my podcast, the Pods Podson Podscot Podcast. Now this. this is. Pottery. Podcasting. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> uh, thank you. So, thank you. what is what are we drinking today? Today we are having a strawberry banana smoothie. It is a a basic thing. It's a it's a staple in my household. Dink, dink. Yeah, mm. that was me calling you a dink, not dink. <laughs> <laughs> That's not as sweet as I was expecting. Yeah, no. No, I, um, yeah, I, like, I always eyeball it every morning, but yeah, no, I usually take, like, a handful of strawberries, a banana or two, and then I just add, like, whatever protein powder or anything that's lying around the house, then milk and, like, uh, water to fill the rest, and that's, uh, I try and have this every morning, um, I don't always have to always get to because, you know, fruit is expensive, um, but yeah, uh, this is, this is my go-to way to start, uh, the day. Um, what, what, before, before I tell you why I like it, what are, what are your thoughts? Cause I would, I, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to hear the full review, uh, before I either make you feel horrible for disliking it or. <laughs> yeah. No, I really like it. Hell yeah. I like, I like, like I've smoothies are not something that I always had when I was growing up. Hmm. And I've had them a lot more um, now that I'm an adult. And I really like it. It's um, usually I add peanut butter to my smoothies. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't mind peanut butter with this one. Yeah, because I, I, I find that it's like um, it just adds like a, a, a bit of a um, not a sweetness, but it just said, it adds like a, I don't know. I I just like peanut butter a lot, but this no, I is love really. Peanut butter. I mean, you can't go wrong with strawberry and banana smoothie. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. can't. Um, yeah, I remember. I remember when I used to go to when I was going to college. I'd always buy the innocent smoothies. I don't know if you have them in Canada, but there's Maybe. like a, there's a brand of smoothie that that comes in little bottles, and they were so oh. expensive. Mm -hmm. And and now having made this much, like this bloody great thing. Yeah, this is my second cup today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what the hell was I spending money on? I like how mm -hmm. how uninformed was I as a as a young person to not just make my own? Um, but yeah, no, this is lovely. And I used it. I used. I don't know if this was right or not. I used frozen berries. Yeah, yeah, you can frozen strawberries, frozen bananas, or like fresh, whichever. It's kind of like for for me for this one, it was, um, it's a do what you can. That's why I said like I eyeball everything, and that's why uh, this morning when I said like I I added some some stuff because I was missing some in ingredients, and I was very insistent on don't don't substitute if you don't have to because uh because this is like strawberry and banana like since I like uh could taste uh has been like my favorite flavor combo like that's just straight up strawberry banana everything if there is a strawberry banana mm. flavor of something i've probably tried it and been mildly addicted to it um mm. and uh especially for like this as like a smoothie it was like the first smoothie i made by myself and i was just like heck yeah but uh after when i was in like a little boy scouts a little little guy uh because uh, i used to be a boy scout let's go did um, you 
Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I, I went through the, <laughs> the, what was it? It was beavers, then cubs, then scouts. And then after mm-hmm. scouts, I was like, nah, the same for me. Uh, mostly because uh, there was like lots of weird stuff happening behind the scenes. Cause I think that was when like my frontal lobe was starting to catch up with the universe of like, oh, these three scout leaders are all sleeping with like the same scout leader's mom. That's yikes. Um, that's not a bit. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, and then also just like really like a uh, like abuse of authority. Well, behavior. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hang on, hang on. You are you are steaming through so much content, right? <laughs> You need to go into more detail of this because I think that that's that's a we need a little bit more more context on the on the three scout leaders and and one mom uh, situation. Did they all know? So was this a scandal at the time? This like it was one of those scandals where it's like almost like that that ye old small town scandal but it's like it's Mm -hmm. not a small town it was just because we're all in boy scouts and our town was a bunch of kids picking their nose and throwing loonies into a bowl for their dues um but no it was (laughs) basically like um because my 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 dad used to to take me and uh i remember i overheard a conversation between him and a leader and basically the gist of it was uh this i don't remember if they were asking like should i go for this kind of thing like she seems super nice whatever and like i heard that similar conversation multiple times and then i heard my dad on the phone saying like yeah i'm pretty sure like all of these dudes are like like sleeping with like this guy's wife and the thing is is there was one of them got walked in on so that was enough to stop the whole thing (laughs) But it was like, oh, yeah, no. it was it was a thing that was going on. And like, I don't, yeah, b- beyond that, I don't know all the details and I don't know how much like was actually happening. But I just heard the secondhand conversations and me being like a little kid who's obsessed with like dinosaurs in my Boy Scouts books. I'm like listening to this, this relationship falling apart over the phone. You know, d- my dad's trying to play counselor wow. or something. And I'm sitting there being like, um, hey, sorry, you guys are being a little loud having your life crisis. My badge needs a little <laughs> ironing on. Okay, can we take that out in the other room? thank you look at this most valuable green thumb gardener right here um i think i had the least amount of badges out of like all the kids like when i think on it like if i look at my if i see my sash in my head i think i can see other kids having like 12 to 20 badges i think i had six um do you remember what they were (laughs) um i think i got one for uh woodworking because we had to make wooden cars and i remember my wooden car like just for, for somehow I made this horrifying machine that just went faster than the other wooden cards. Cause you do the thing where you like hollow out the bottom and you put weights in and it has to be an exact weight. And then you get to carve the wood into a car. So it was. Okay. Okay. Hang on. Okay, you've got to, you got to remember. No, 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 no. You got to remember. I don't like, I went to, I think I went to one, uh, 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 scouts. Well, I don't even know if it was scouts or cubs or whatever. I went to one uh, meeting gathering. I don't even know what they call them. What are they called? Um, I I remember they Session? were when I was younger. They called them like powwows on the regular. But then I think they became meetings when you know. Yeah. When. <laughs> But right. I, I will say before before like larger organizations like we did it like a treaty acknowledgement every time when like we met together and stuff. So that was like it, it we. Not that we were ahead of things, but it was like I can understand because a lot of the stuff we did were like we worked with like indigenous groups so they could like teach us stuff, like teach us crafts and whatnot. I see, so that I was see. like so so it was a part of it was part of that, but also like we were a group of white kids saying we're getting together for a powwow. So for a that's powwow. not that that right. ain't it. Um Okay. Uh, so I went so I went to a non powwow. <laughs> Um, because, yeah. because also in England, we, we, you know, we, we don't have, uh, indigenous people in England. So apart from, you know, the Welsh possibly, or the, the Scots. So, um, so Sorry. like, I just went to one of these meetings. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's, <laughs> so we went, I went to this thing and, and, um, and, uh, the whole thing was just a bunch of kids making, they were like making, uh, Flying saucers out of uh, paper plates, and then they were throw, and then they were throwing them like frisbees along this this long uh, hallway, like the 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 space that they were using. They were throwing it, and it was like, okay, guys, which one? Who's gonna throw the the their flying saucer further? 
And mm-hmm. and I was there, and I didn't know anybody. Mm-hmm. And the whole time I was there, I was just like, "Why am I here? What is this? What are we doing here? What, like, is this just childcare? What? Like, am I supposed to earn a badge for who can throw a paper plate the furthest?" And it was very bizarre to me. Oh, hundo! Like, I would say a lot of it is like borderline, like weird, like oh, what's it? <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> you, want to, you want to take that from the top? You want to take uh, yeah, that from sorry. the top? <laughs> oh no, the the story. Sorry, no, <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Uh, so a lot of it is like weird childcare, like daycare stuff. But like the thing is, is the kids bring in like two dollars dues. The parents pay a fee, like that's expensive, like like mm. m- m- like for the year. But then the kids also do bottle drives and chocolate sales that like go straight to the organization. Mm-hmm. Organization, I say with heavy right. air quotes. This is this is not me accusing the Scouts of Canada of any malpractice or behavior. But where's that <laughs> money going? I remember personally raising <laughs> hundreds of dollars in fundraising for bottles and chocolate sales because I was a cute kid. I was a little guy. I like every so often I'd stutter a little bit, so I'd go up and I'd be like, "Hey, would would you like to buy some chocolates, sir?" And I know wow. I was adorable. It wasn't an wow, intentional thing. Like, I was just so anxious all the time because I was just a little guy. So you were just like the 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 hallmark. You were the hallmark <laughs> card version of a of a Boy Scout. You had the little yeah, stutter. Honestly, like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the little the little <laughs> the little like like blonde like brown eyes like white kid walking up the door being like hi. We're the Scouts of Canada. We're here to make Gee a difference. Gee Willikers, mister. You, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? And after school, I'd get on my bike and I'd go save aliens uh, and and solve yeah. mysteries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, wow. But yeah. So, so to rewind, because uh, I'll dumb this story down for someone who probably hasn't had a callus on their thumb in their life, uh, Miles. <laughs> we, t- we got a wood block. And we got to we got to make a car out of this. And the way you had to do it was the wood blocks had to weigh a certain amount. So um, you would hollow out the bottom of it and put like little metal weights and then you'd get to weigh that. And then your car would be allowed to race. And you just put wheels on this block of wood. Oh, okay, I understand. Right. Yeah. So I got a badge for that because like when we went and did it, everybody did their own thing. And I made this abomination. I think I have it somewhere like at my mom's house. It was a scary looking car. Like all the other kids are just like, yeah, I'm going to make mine with like racing stripes. I'm going to make mine like look like it's from space. I was like, what if I took Lee? Low and stitch a dinosaur a gun and set it on fire <laughs> and made it a car <laughs> and i like just like you drop it from a thing like a hot wheels track like they have like a yeah, big ramp and it, it just like goes. a ramp yeah exactly mine was exactly the certified like weight thing oh i also covered it in holographic stickers that was the other thing so those stickers that like you move them and you see like a 3d image i just mm-hmm. had those plastered on this abomination um and I don't know if it was the holographic stickers, the fact that I was the poster child for Scouts Canada, or uh, if, <laughs> if, you know, um, uh, the power of God in anime. But I just remember <laughs> putting it down, seeing all the other cars. And I was like, mine's not going to go very fast. And it's just, just like bad out of hell. And then like the other kids are just like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so I ended up like getting like a badge for that. And I was like, Wow, I did it. Me, a Boy Scout. Um, and that's like the only activity that I think I remember doing anything for. That makes so much sense knowing you, though, because you are very much the kind of person that tries to find the optimal the <laughs> optimal yeah. win, win strategy in everything I've ever played with you. Like every conversation in a new game that we have, you're like, yo, no, listen, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do, you gotta, if you do this, that, and the other, then you get like a plus 15 to your speed and then you get to just rail on these guys. And it, it, that completely tracks. Um, yeah, you know, the other kids are sitting there and be like, wow, mine's gonna have googly eyes. I'm like, you fool, this holographic sticker adds plus five streamlineness. You are all cowards. <laughs> Not only does it look like there's a 3D shark coming at you, I am the shark, and I'm about to bite your little head off. (laughs) Well, on the outside, please buy some chocolates. Yeah, 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 exactly. Nightmare started at a young age. Um, Yeah. yeah, That's that's funny, because, like, I do, like, I do, like, doing, like, crafty things, like, making weird stuff and, and doing that. But especially in, like, you said, like, video games and, like, other, like, activities, I... 
I know as a person, because like I uh, prior to like uh, getting my meds and whatnot, I have very bad like hand like shaking and stuff from anxiety and whatnot. So if I get oh, really? uh, my 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 heart rate elevated at all, if it's from like being stressed, like nervous, anxious or whatever, my hands will jitter. And, and it's most notorious when I'm drawing. If I'm drawing, my hands will start like just buzzing basically and it'll mess up my line work. And then because my line work gets messed up, I go over it again and again and again and again because I just want to get the perfect line, but I can't. Um, mm. But so like with my hands jittering and stuff, uh, like very tactical games growing up, I was never very good at because I can't do the precise like flick the analog stick. I can't do that in my mm-hmm. reaction time uh, with like a duh, duh, uh, as the cool kids call it and whatnot is is not supreme dream meme machine. Um, but so 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 my goal when playing playing games and stuff growing up is because like anytime my siblings cousins even even friends would play they would all just beat the crap out of me and they would just keep playing games and just like i was always like if it was like the whole thing of like uh the last one there's a rotten egg but you're playing mario kart and it's like whoever loses has to go do a lap around the house i was just like i was only in shape because i was running around the house because i oh. was just in circles um And like, so I would just like lose constantly in games. And that led me to, to start to play games in a way of like, okay, I do not have the physical tactical skill to just get from point A to point B in the simplest way possible. What things can I learn, utilize and do in the game to ensure that I have the highest chance of success? Like when I played Breath of the Wild, I skipped everything. I made my armor as strong as possible out the gate so I could walk up to the bosses and just like insta kill them because they're Mm. dealing no damage to me and stuff like that. When I like Mm. 80s, we talked a lot about uh, when I was playing lots was my goal was to figure out what weapon is the best, what thing is the best to to, like look for for items what is the best like pathing so that i don't have to just re- rely on can i dodge and figure out this boss's techniques as opposed to i want to make myself so prepared that if something does falter or go wrong i am ready for that and i can just keep going without letting that mess with it because the second something would mess with me or throw me off then i i it's hard for me to recover and so, if yeah. that isn't a metaphor for life i don't know what is mm-hmm I'm full of wisdom. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna wait every time you take a sip. That's why I'm gonna wait to say something funny, you know? <laughs> yeah, thanks. That's the third time you've done that so far. I appreciate it. It's comedy. God. I, this is this is really filling, by the way. Yeah, like it's mm, it's straight mm, up mm. like that 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 bad boy. Like I I said this is my second one today, and I'm like I shouldn't have it as my second one. Like I'm getting like near when I usually have like an earlier because I I decided I hate uh time uh so i just kind of like snack through the day and that's been like very helpful for like weight loss sorry you hate time you hate hate time time. i just i like i don't like i don't like the fact that it's like hello yes it is eight o'clock have breakfast 12 well you're gonna have i see six o'clock better have supper like i don't i don't like following like a certain rhythm and thing i do like having scheduled like i'm gonna work for an hour do this like this but i really like to feel out my my days and whatnot and and yeah because i know i as I mentioned before, being like uh, neuro spicy and whatnot, like time mm-hmm. already is like a big enough struggle, especially like being unmedicated or whatnot. Mm-hmm. So like time either goes like that, like breezes by, or I just sit there and I'm stuck and I'm like, everything is going so slow. Oh my God, please. Yeah. I don't want to have an yeah. existential crisis just because I have to wait for a bus. Um, mm-hmm. so, so for me, like finding that like I can just get lots of small finger foods and stuff through the day like i have just like an open uh, like pack of peppers broccoli and carrots and stuff and i just walk to mm-hmm. the fridge and i'll eat some broccoli when i want to want to fill the tank yeah. up um and like and is that my, it, mm, it, sorry is that is that is that like you just eat whenever you feel that craving to to eat something or is it more like you have like a timer that goes off and you're like, okay, I should probably have something to eat. Cause it's like, mm. it's 12 o'clock and I haven't eaten anything or anything like that. Cause I, I, I imagine my understanding of like with medication and stuff that you, you do need to like, there's often, uh, it, you know, you lose that, that, um, you, you don't feel hungry with a lot of medica- medications for, mm. for, for stuff. So I'm, I'm wondering if that's, that plays a part of it. Yeah. Like, so the first thing I do is like I I, I started this with my I'm gonna reach and grab this bad boy uh, my 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 hydration uh, lad my lovely almost looks like a rocket pop um 
It's huge. Like if you're if you're listening to the to the the audio version of this, it is. <laughs> what, how 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 massive is that? That's four liters. That's a four liter bottle of yeah, water. Yeah, four liter water bottle. And I drink is, two or three a day. That is, uh, uh, what is that? A turquoise and pink. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's got a nice little fade, like a uh, ice cream sherbet. Anyway, um, wait, wait. But, so you drink sixteen liters of water a day? Yeah, ish. Sixteen liters of water a day. Good lord! Or wait. 16 four liters. Lit- no, this is four, four liters. I drink two or three of these a day, so that would be two like 12 or three. Max. Sorry, yeah, I thought yeah, you yeah, said yeah. four of them a day. No, God, are you <laughs> kidding me? My back teeth would be floating like 24 um, 7. Uh, uh, man, that would be terrifying. He's just like, oh, God, it's the water boy. You just hear me slosh and like, walk in a room like, where's the water? I'm thirsty. Daddy needs a drinky poo. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but no, so, uh, no, I started doing like a kind of water test thing where if I get a craving for food, because, um, very much food gives you so much dopamine and whatnot. And I have struggled mm-hmm. very much with like food addiction, like uh, for a long time, like I can, I can sit there and uh, a bag of chips suddenly becomes eating five bags of chips. Like I, and, uh, in university, yeah. that was an even worse habit because I would sit to myself and have two large pizzas and a two liter of like Coke by myself. And mm-hmm. I would eat that in like two hours. And I was like, that is, how does the body do that? I have a slice of pizza now. And I'm like, oh my God, kill me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. yeah. Like, right. Um, but so I just like very unhealthy, like eating habits and that. And so every so often when that craving timer goes off, cause like my body, um, I don't like know if it's like a conditional thing or if it's just like a me thing, but I, I have a very difficult time telling when I'm full and when I'm like satisfied and good. So, mm. uh, and the same with the one I'm actually hungry. So what I'll do is I will, um, go through my day, do my thing. And if I start to get that hunger sensation, what I'll do is I'll try and have some water. And if that water starts to give that those sweet, sweet brain juice, I'm like, okay, I'm not hungry. I'm thirsty. And like, that is my body that needed yes. that. And then I'll, I'll just keep having water for a bit. And then the second that that no longer scratch that itch and I'm feeling that actual hunger. I'm like, okay, I think this is actual hunger. Let's go get something light, breezy, easy, and then treat that through the day. And cause my partner is a teacher. So usually like breakfast, first meal kind of thing is a little bigger in the morning. And then like supper is often, mm-hmm. it's either like a graze evening for a couple hours. We're doing the kind of seven to seven. We don't eat from like 7 PM to 7 AM just cause like right. trying like different habits and whatnot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, usually it's like either grazing through the evening or like a larger meal, but no, for the most part in the day, it's that if I get that kind of spider sense of, uh, yo, I, I might need to, to, to fill the tank. Uh, mm-hmm. I start with water because like you can overhydrate it like absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And, you can. And I'm always riding that line. When I told my doc how much water I drink, but he looked at me and he was like, you're lying, right? Like you're not actually doing that. Right. And I was like why um, so like i have i have been like more so on like the two bottles like uh, as opposed to like the three uh just because like i just really like water i love water so much and i was very tempted when you asked me about this to be like i just want to have water but i was like that's so lame you start your first episode it's just like water with jakey boy <laughs> um uh yeah i think i think everyone if you did that i think everyone would think we were on some kind of uh, uh health cult that I was trying to induct people Drink into, water. like, please Drink join our water. water, our water club. Tell us how much water you've drunk today. Yeah, exactly. ASMR yeah, exactly. Water, water club, sip, sip. <laughs> um, but, uh, got him again. Uh, uh, but like, so. So yeah, it, because like notoriously, I I know especially like those are like neurodivergent and stuff. Like, will go like two days without water and suddenly be like. Why am I thirsty? <laughs> and it's just, it's like skipping those long periods. So for me, it's like forcing water into my schedule was the, at first, my first like month and some doing it, I was like, I hate this so much. I don't want to keep drinking water. And then the second my brain was like, no, you know what? We're doing this. And now it's just like, I honestly, like I, I don't walk around anywhere in the house without this. And usually when mm-hmm. I leave, it's in my backpack. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I, I love having water. If I go anywhere, like somebody offers me a drink, I just say, yeah, no, I just want some water. Cause it's just, you're constantly like cleansing your body it just feels good. And also mm-hmm. it's just like, 
there is nothing better after like an awful day regardless if it's like uh what the weather's like whatever like if it's a if it's a hot day an ice cold glass of water mm -mm, baby Absolutely. if it's a real cold day like hot water you can even add tea if you want but even just hot water by itself hot water and lemon dude okay nah, no it's the best no 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 no, no, no. It. I disagree. I you, you, you lost hey. me at hot water. Drinking hey, a glass of hot that's water fair. is, is that's the weirdest thing for me. Hot water. Yeah, hot water Tea. and lemon is so good. No, I disagree. Yeah. Hot water okay. on its mm -hmm. own. That's, that's a weird thing for me. I, so I remember, I remember, um, uh, I went to the Czech Republic once. It was like one of the first, first times I ever went off on my own on, on a, on a trip anywhere. They, you know, hmm. the, They've got cheap flights to the Czech Republic, and we and I went to I can't remember where it was, but it's a it's a town in the Czech Republic that has um, a, a a hot spring underneath it, and you can just go and and they're just like hot springs just uh, with taps connected to them, and you can just pour a glass of hot water from this hot spring, and it's supposed to be very like. Re rejuvenating and 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 energizing and what have you um and i and i did it and it was the most revolting experience because <laughs> i love this not, like the deep tranquil like yeah, the hot spring yeah. waters and miles sitting there like no Gah. it was yeah <laughs> legit it was it was the most metallic first of all it was super metallic and secondly it was it was like really warm. It wasn't hot. It was just like really warm water. Mm -hmm. And I, I, that's like the antithesis of what I want when I drink a glass of water. I, I like, I'm, I'm kind of on the fence when it comes to metallic levels. Like I'm fine with tap water in Toronto. We have good tap water in Toronto, but like if, if you, if you heat that up, it, unless it has like tea or something else in it, I am T in it. Okay, stop. Listen, <laughs> look. I just, I just hear you saying you don't like hot water, but you'll put tea in it, and it's just like if anybody's listening to the accent of this handsome king right here and seeing me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's fair. I know, like the hot water thing is like, it's one of those that's not for everybody. It's the same way, like, um, like the smoothies aren't for everybody. It's the same way, like coffee, like you know, like it's a different mm. strokes kind of thing. Like, I just really like water. I just really like water. I also really like lemons and stuff. So that's why hot water and lemon is like usually how I go. Cause I will eat like a lemon, like an orange because I'm a monster. Ha, but, yeah. Have you, have you, have you noticed that your skin is better? Cause I know that drinking a lot of water is supposed to be very good for your skin. Yeah, it looks pretty okay. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> I mean, just, uh, I can't tell just, over the no, camera. Uh, the quality no. is not good enough, but I'm sure the video will show it. It'll be uh, fine. No, uh, in, in all seriousness. Yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't have like super like, issues with that i did in my beard like mostly i would get like that kind of like like mm. just like ingrown hairs and stuff like that um but yeah i'd say for the most part like i'm uh my skin's like it doesn't dry out as much i used to have like really 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 bad dry skin so i think that's why it's like my my skin is like normalized because like i used to get like mm -hmm. winter rolls around and my knuckles are bleeding like that's how mm -hmm. dry my skin used to get all the time yeah um and it would just like full body experience suddenly winter rolls around and like i'm an amphibian no that's slimy uh reptile that was the word i was looking for um yeah, yeah where yeah, it's yeah. just like lizard time um yeah which is which sucked but um no i think yeah like I don't know. It's just lots of like, like health stuff. I just feel nice, you know. Is is so? Had you've noticed a difference from when it's super cold? Like having that amount of hydration is like mm -hmm. helped with the dry skin as well. Hundred, like a thousand percent, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like winters used to be like absolutely intolerable because I would have to, I'd sleep with like gloves with just like Vaseline on and stuff because like yeah. my skin would get so dry, and yeah. also like my sinuses would just be awful because like it would just, uh, I'd be so plugged up and stuff. Just my body hated the cold and weather change and i still kind of get like a little um froggy around like when weather's changing and whatnot mm -hmm. i don't think i have allergies or anything it's just like my body do be doing what it's doing but no honestly since introducing so much like water and stuff um i'm just like i don't have nearly as many sinus issues and i don't have nearly as much issue with like my hands and skin and whatnot um it mm. was just like i had to i had to basically like bully myself for a month into to drinking just a ton of water um because like i would go like honestly like 
I want to say I, I could go like three, four days without having an actual glass of water, but I'd be like, but there's water in a bottle of Coke. So I'll just drink nine Stop. of those. <laughs> like that's straight up. I used to like my, so the amount of water I drink now in from bef- uni- like up to when I would, would say halfway through university and before that used to be the amount of pop I, I drink. And that's not even a bit. That is like a hundred percent like the, wow. the, yeah, you think like, wow, eight liters of water. That's crazy for someone to drink that much. Yeah. Imagine drinking that much, like, like Coke and stuff. Like my, my body hated me. And I was like, I don't know why I feel so funny, but like, hey, this caffeine stuff's like regulating my brain. So I mean, it must be doing something good. Yeah. And, yeah. And I'm sitting there like, I don't think I have 80 of those HD things, but I just like, I'm just having another bottle of Coke because I want to. I can stop whenever I want. Um, <laughs> there there was a time when when I when I first like, because I, I now just drink like water, coffee, smoothies and things. Uh, when I first went to like cut, cold turkey for pop and stuff because i would drink so much i remember i was sitting there uh in like it was a little garage sale activity and uh, i was just like helping with stuff uh, like a, a, as a volunteer and uh someone had like a can of like coke and stuff and they're like like hey hey jake do you want one and they they crack it open and i'm sitting there and i'm walking uh and i had like i was i was bringing someone's like drink to them and uh i remember them saying like do you want one cracking it open for me holding it out and they're like you good and i look at my hand their drink this can of pop i just crushed and was running down my hand because of how badly i wanted to have their thing and it was like it was already like opened a little bit and stuff so it's not me like like pulling thing but i was sitting there i just squeeze it because i was just like i wasn't even thinking about it but like how badly this was like day two or three on how much pop i would drink so i saw that and then i just looked at my hand i was like I have made my hand just gross and sticky and just like crushed like a, a like a full can of pop because like this is how like bad I want that pop. And if I wasn't doing my like daily gym routine and stuff, like I like I don't know what would have happened to my my body because like wow. I was honestly like yeah, I I was not I was not drinking a healthy amount of pop, but I was justifying it by the amount of theater I was doing, the amount like yeah. I was working out twice a day and like like and stuff like that. So if I had that habit now, boy, howdy. Um, I, <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Yeah. No. Good so lord. That was, yeah. So I was. I was a. I was a soda fiend. I really like yeah. the, the soda pop. So now, if like on like a treat, I'll have like a diet coke or something like that. Because I was just like, you know what? Like whatever. It's caffeine it's, and it's good. But for the most part, honestly, I'm just so hooked on. I love water. So so when you when you were doing the, the that amount of pop and stuff you weren't getting the the shakes from the caffeine in it at all um because i because mm, you were saying that you got you get you had the the shakes when you were doing gaming like and stuff, and, 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 stuff. And, and stuff like that uh, no i found like once like and like this is like a, a a reflection sort of thing but i found like stimulating stuff like coffee like being such a powerful stimulant and the amount of caffeine i was pumping in my body was kind of balancing that out like i would mm. i like again i'd have such an absurd amount and like yeah like i sh- i absolutely should have had the shakes i should have had like heart palpitations but my mm. body just kind of regulated on a lot of it and i think that's why i kept having so much is it wasn't just the the addiction to the sugar flavor and all that but it was just like that the fact that the caffeine was keeping me regulated, more calm, more, um, and that's because of because of the the ADHD. So the you know oh, yeah. the and that's I think that's a common that's a common theme that that many people with ADHD use caffeine to to regulate because they're not able to get the. Like, it, 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 I'll allow you to kind of inform, but I, I mm-hmm. my understanding is that it's that you're unable to get enough stimulation from the world mm-hmm. around you and so then having the caffeine then kind of like fills those gaps and so then you're able to get the the input uh that your brain is needing and then you don't do things like eat 12 bags of chips or etc cetera, etc cetera, to to keep chasing the that dopamine am i right in getting that yeah yeah, yeah exactly like because yeah there's the two streams of inactive or inattentive and attentive adhd and like where yeah, it's it's exactly that of either um, you need like less stimuli to coast in something, or or even more abundant stimuli, um, or bodily hyperactivity, and a lot of that usually. You need that, but then once you start getting those chemicals, your brain will chase them so viscerally where it'll be something like the second you open your phone on TikTok, you start to get a hit that hit of dopamine. 
So we're going to ride that out for six hours and I'm not going to let you do anything else. And it's not mm. like a straight up, like a, it's not a, I am choosing to be on TikTok. It's a, your brain saying we are staying here. I need this. And it's mm-hmm. like, you are basically in a headlock and it's, and like lots of people like from the outside, it looks like, Oh, the person is just lazy. They're just not doing something. It's like, no, could not be farther from the truth because in the back of their head, they're saying, this is wrong. I don't want to be doing this. There's this internalized shame and stuff with that, mm-hmm. but the brain is pumping out those other chemicals. So the body just gets locked in it. And then it's just like a, trance right Mm -hmm. so with caffeine and stuff it basically takes those lines of either the inattentiveness or hyperactiveness etc and it does exactly that it it makes it so more things not only give the chemicals but more so you can switch your focus from things uh that aren't giving the chemicals so you can bounce from point a to point b to to whatever what have you you need there's been a lot of people um Oh, there's been a lot of debate at the moment, especially in the UK, because there was a there was a, a panorama, which is a a, a BBC kind of um, expose series. Uh, kind I of thought news, you were about to talk about the expose. pandemic, and I thought you were no, just no, no, something no. funny for a second, and I was like, "There's <laughs> the, a panorama." The panorama. Like, yeah, it was, it was worldwide. Panini. Yeah, I yeah I saw the. Hey, look, I saw the panagos. Like I, I I'm aware. <laughs> uh, it was worth. <laughs> continue. Sorry, I just my brain went the pan, panorama. <laughs> like, oh no, this is a serious thing. Anyway, continue. yeah, no, that, that, there was a there was a there was a panorama documentary type thing about how people in the UK are avoiding the NHS and going private healthcare to get ADHD diagnoses and that those mm. clinics are potentially the the way that they presented it that the the clinics were um giving people medication unregulated and not particularly like trying and and I think what I'm interested in as someone with ADHD is is like why do you think that more and more people are being diagnosed with ADHD because that that seems to be it seems to be from from the surface that more and more people are getting diagnosed with ADHD it's kind of similar to that thing where it's like the whole like left-handedness there's like uh people with left hands and then that spiked and then that like normalized is because like conversations with like ADHD autism anxiety depression like like neuro neuro spiciness and whatever that falls under was it was not only taboo, it was, it was, it, it was insulting to, to say like someone's so, like, you're saying my kid has ADHD, doesn't pay enough attention. No, he, he like, my kid's just lazy. Shut up. Like it's, mm-hmm. and that's, that's awful. That's, that, that's mm-hmm. awful. And that's what the, the stigma became. And that became so regular. Um, and I think now with things like with like TikTok, that TikTok just literally sucks your attention span. So what is it going to draw? It's going to draw people who likely have ADHD, likely have like uh, like neurospicy tendencies because it can hold a grip on them. But then so those people are creating content for others like that. And it's opening the conversation. It's not just TikTok. It's lots of things mm, like lots mm-hmm. of short form media and whatnot, what have you. And then on top of that, the conversation with mental health as a whole is becoming more regular and normalized because like there's like celebrities people in general Mm -hmm. are just talking about the fact it's like yeah like i'm not okay i'm not doing well i'm not whatever what have you and i think think so the juggling of all that is causing where it's where where people are looking at like oh my god there's so many more people with like adhd or whatnot it's crazy it's rising it's like no adhd probably is just a very like more common thing than we think and Mm -hmm. it's just when you don't like talk about it, regulate these things, have support for these things, then it's just going to come out of the woodwork like crazy. Like, for example, for myself, like my ADHD diagnosis is it was one of those diagnoses where uh, both my doctor and psychiatrist were like, yeah, this is this is this is likely what it is. Do I have a paperwork that says Jakey has ADHD? No, but this is like basically when they gave me my medication, everything they said, we're going to be treating your ADHD and not just mm-hmm. ADHD symptoms, which they usually dance around with that wording and stuff. But that was what they specifically said. Yeah. And then uh, to get officially diagnosed with that, I am on a wait list. This is for ADHD and for autism. Um, I'm on a wait list that I joined about a year and a half ago, and there are still four years left in my waiting. Uh, like it is a yeah. five year process. If I want to expedite that process, it is almost $2,000. Yeah. I, that's the same thing in, in England. Yeah, that's the same thing in England. I think mm-hmm. that's why people have been going to the private clinics is because yeah. it's I think the NHS is a similar wait time of about four to five years to be able to get seen on, on mm-hmm. the NHS for a diagnosis or even even just for a an assessment, let alone a yeah. diagnosis. Yeah. And and that's the thing is is like you know your body better than anybody because you know the ins and outs and you know what you need. And 
for me personally, I struggle a lot when it came to like self-diagnosing and, and self-labeling because a lot of my family and friends and, and others would say like, well, once you label something, you can't take that back. Labeling leads to X, Y, Z, whatever. And so I had this very negative perception of where I would look at it as like other people can self-diagnose, self-label, self-whatever. Um, but that's not, that's, that's not for me. I'm not allowed to do that because X, Y, Z, what I've been taught. And, and after a while I was like, no, you know what? This is like my body. This is my mind. I've been taking mm. these tests. I've been going through the resources. Like I've done like a year and a half of just like copious research, copious like professional testing, like copious like like work doctors, like specialists. Like I don't have the money to do this thing, but I'm not going to deny myself that there is something with my mental health that I need assistance with, like mental and developmental health rather, that I I, I need this, right? And and so to put that just on a wait list to say like you're you're you only have like ADHD or autism or depression, anxiety, whatever, because you have official diagnosis and a piece of paper that says, though, uh, I think anyone who truly stands by that and thinks self-diagnosis is invalid can honestly get bent because I struggled with that for a, like so long and i i was like as much as like we joke about like me being like the poster kid for scouts canada and like this little bright eyed (laughs) like little lad i was this impish little kid who just was obsessed with animals dinosaurs like facts about science and stuff i couldn't sit still in class if i got dysregulated i would throw desks i would really hurt other kids and myself i would i would run rampant i was an absolute terror i went through like while i was looking through my 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 stuff i was going through like old report cards of things like teachers said about me and it was just rough of like jakey doesn't like being around other kids he doesn't work good in groups he's like he needs certain things like this and i'm like it's all right there and the writing is they all saw it why didn't anyone care to get me into a doctor anything and the fact now i'm an adult and i still have these things i struggle with executive dysfunction regulation and stuff that just makes me lazy or that makes me a piece of shit that is Mm. like what I can't because it's the same thing as before when I said when your brain puts you in that headlock and we're watching TikTok now we are we're going to sit here and drink this cup of coffee and stare into the abyss we're going to like or even things like when it goes into the darkness of mental health where people who struggle with like um, like suicidal ideation self harm and stuff like that you're going to put that solely on the person and say it's their fault that is a crock of shit because we as much as we want to say like we are masters of our own environment stuff we don't have full control over how our brain distributes chemicals we don't have control because it's we are as much like uh in service to this thing in our head as much as it's in service to us it controls our appendages and stuff but it has certain needs and things as much as your body needs water it needs nourishment sustenance and stuff you need to take care of that thing because if it doesn't get the right chemicals it will find ways to get it that's how things like addiction lead to like abusive relationships like substance abuse etc so I just hate this, this mindset that it's like, you've like, if you just, if you just push hard enough, if you work hard enough, if your fitness hard enough, if you're doing this, like you're, you're going to be great. Uh, like when I was, as I said before, I was drinking lots of pop and stuff that wasn't healthy. I was working out a ton. I was constantly social. I was doing theatrical shows. I was never more depressed in my entire life. And I was, I was top of my game. I was like the lead of some shows. I was like, I, I looked really good in those pictures and stuff. I like looked, felt great. Um, and, uh, looked, felt great in the sense of, I was able to convince everybody that I was just doing breezy and I was just one bad day from just losing it. And, and mm-hmm. now that I've been like, medicated like researching my health seeing what i need of like if i'm starting to get dysregulated or i'm having like a meltdown or a panic attack like i like i put on i put on my sound canceling headphones i get like a weighted blanket and stuff now that i do those things suddenly my body's like oh hey you know what this feels better this feels better to actually take care of things like my partner is so so supportive like and so good to me and so understanding and loves the absolute shit out of me and like when those things happen like my first reaction is that trauma brain in the back of my head of like oh man i suck i am the worst i like i i am i am i i am flawed i am bad and they say like no you know what because that doesn't define you and like you need assistance right now we're gonna get you that assistance we're gonna do that and then we're gonna be back like and right in the saddle and i think that if you want to label any of those things as someone's fault or a a defamation on their character or whatever like that is that that is a very sad existence to lead if that's how you look at other people because like i think there's so much beauty and wonderful um everything in mental and developmental health and there is amazing 
stunning creativity that like emerges from these things. But if you want that beautiful creativity and you want the diverse expression that emerges from these things, you have to understand there's also, there's also some, some bad and there's some, there's some hard things to deal with, but that's not the person's fault. You can't give them a gold star every time they play the piano, like a master and like put them in a corner and time out just because like they had a meltdown. Like you have to yeah. treat that as it is. It does. It does seem to be like, you know, you're only allowed to have the good stuff without without allowing someone to have, you know, f you know, uh, their own stuff that they have to deal with at the same time. It's, it is it is a bizarre kind of um, double, double standard, really. Yeah. Yeah. Double it's a a good way to put it. There's a double standard that you well, you know, be really great, but don't don't have a bad day. Like, what? Yeah. Come on. They're ridiculous. <laughs> Right? Like that's mm. that's exactly also I just realized I saw the audio levels. I realized there is a long period where I just went <laughs> off and I'd like to apologize um for just going suddenly. Uh this is my no, Joker I, era. <laughs> no, but I get it. I, I totally get it. Cause I think you I think uh, you know, you like you said, you you've been in a in this place where you've been uh conditioned to feel like you're you're lazy or what have whatever. Mm -hmm. And and yep. so then for there to be um uh, you know, people out there saying that that the people, and this is my opinion, but the people that are are trying to get diagnosed with ADHD or what have you, um, are just doing it to abuse drugs or something. Is is a is a is it's a weird, it, it's a weird mentality to be in, and I don't quite understand it. Which is why I brought it up with you because I felt like hmm. you probably have have experienced it more firsthand than I have. But it's just a, it's a bizarre thing to have um, to have people worry that of all the drugs out there that people are going to, <laughs> to try and cheat the system to get, you know, Adderall. No, no, Miles, you don't understand, man. Like they're, they're, these kids are out there right now. They're seeking a concept of time and self-regulation. It's an absolute crock of shit. The fact that they want to manage themselves, honestly, like that disgusts me. Back in my day when I used to take a finger full of... <laughs> <laughs> Like, and that's the thing. Yeah, that's no, the 110%. thing. It's like, it's often like people that were were our age in the eighties that were like, and cocaine was a hell of a drug back then. Like it was everywhere. <laughs> for God's sake, man! I sure like this one, sorry, Pop. I hope there's nothing <laughs> strange about it. <laughs> right? Yeah. So no, bizarre that, to it. me. And and that's why, like, I'm really I'm really thankful. That, like, like more of this stuff is becoming more normalized, regulated, and whatnot. Um, because like. Like, yeah, like I, I'm on the, the highest level that you can be for the, 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 I'm on, I'm on a, the Vivance refrigeration. <laughs> that's a bad joke. <laughs> um, but, uh, I, that's, but like the, the fact that like I'm on the top bar of that and that's like, that's what works for me. And like it wrangles in the little rat brain, like the way I like prior to like looking into my like diagnosis stuff this is not even a bit i used to describe my brain as two halves i'd be like yeah there's that part of me that like loves facts and like is this little guy who's like a little botanist you know and that's how i would say like that's the asd brain now as like looking but then there's this feral badger goblin in there and he's sitting there and he's going like <laughs> and like so one of them is sitting there being like wow this control panel for this brain sure looks fun the other one's like hit that hit that hit that <laughs> <laughs> and so you know it's just like that is straight up that's how i, uh, I would describe it. like yeah sometimes when i get a little zany guys it's because there's just two little guys in my head and they're both wrestling for the controls <laughs> and they're all sitting there looking at me like <laughs> should i hide my silverware <laughs> um, <laughs> um <laughs> but like that's 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 the thing it's like so me getting my stuff and being able to like wrangle in that little rat demon so i can just actually go about my day-to-day -day. yeah give me another hit doc of normal living oh my god yeah god heaven forbid, forbid i want that yeah heaven forbid yeah. you're productive <laughs> oh god yeah right but then but then what i love too is like when i was like unmedicated and working on my comics and stuff like and uh you already know this and have given me shit for it but i would start my day at 6 a.m drawing and i would end my day at 3 a.m the next day <laughs> still drawing um and uh that is why i have hand issues and stuff and like i'm healthier now 
and I'm taking care of myself and I have an ultrasound all the way in September. Dear God. I can't but, believe it's September for that. That's ridiculous. I know. And, and I got that appointment like a month and a half ago. Um, and the nerve specialist still hasn't gotten a hold of me. Um, but uh, but people people will love when people with like uh, like neurodivergent tendencies, when they are exploitable in the workplace mm. and stuff, that, that dedication, that hyper fixation and doing a great mm. job and stuff. Like you said before, like they want them to just be good and stuff. So when I was outputting comics and stuff like that, like and I was just fully like taking my body and just juicing it for everything it was worth. And I'm paying for it now. Mm. Um but then, like, for example, like uh, l- large streaming organizations that use purple, uh, <laughs> if you go to take a break on those and you go to take any time for yourself, hey, you're you're streaming eight hours a day. You're doing like these super long things and you're not taking care of yourself. Hey, we'll give you two extra viewers every time you go live. That's nice. You took a day off. I'm going to come to your house and I'm going to shoot <laughs> you in the ear. Um <laughs> For legal reasons, and this is a joke. Um, but but like but seriously, like that's 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 mm-hmm. it with things like like social media and stuff. But even workplace stuff of just mm-hmm. you hear the workplace horror stories of like neurodivergent for folks working in the workplace. They're doing super great and stuff, and then if they're having a bad day or an off day or a rough day, and then there's just no grace given. It's like mm, sorry, um, yeah the uh, the the work cow that was giving us a lot of that good milk is starting to get a little rowdy. Time to take them out back, and it's just yeah. Like, yeah yeah why am i expendable (laughs) yeah it's like um in in canada there's a one of the major telephone companies bell has a uh let's talk day where they where they like (laughs) try to encourage people to talk about their mental health meanwhile bell like does not oh crap (laughs) i almost knocked over my smoothie (laughs) shit uh bell does not care Mm-hmm. about the mental health of their employees whatsoever and so it, yeah, no, it, 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 it is it is only mental health seems to only matter to people when it's uh, a good tax write-off it's hey. it's it's ridiculous well let's talk mm-hmm. <laughs> got him again exactly every single yeah. time i keep giving you st- I keep, i'm like oh jake will talk for a bit i'll have some smoothie and then it's immediately immediately um, you make me like almost spit it out. it's just because i'm so funny honestly mm-hmm. like that's that's the thing you got to worry about with a guy like me you know just constant <laughs> banger jokes see i got him again um no and here's the thing i made a comic for the bell let's talk stuff because i was like uh one of my friends was doing a campaign with it or something and i was mm-hmm. like wow this is great and like i like posted my stuff and somebody messaged me and said like wow i really like that you're doing mental health stuff and i was like that's su- super rad and then they like talked to me about it and they said like it's a shame what bell actually does though i was like what do you mean by that <laughs> and, and then i saw it and i was like oh no oh no <laughs> Oh no! Um, so you know, yeah. Ooh, live and learn, as Sonic the Hedgehog says. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. As and that's a and that's a perfect time for a Sonic says moment. Do you have time to stick around for some advice? Oh, I am. I have. I have cleared my day for this because <laughs> I want to sit here for as long as possible and make you giggle and and say fun things. Also, I just realized. Oh my gosh, this is a banger moment for uh, we're talking about Joe. I, I was painting my nails so I could have a little fidget can that we, wasn't yeah, distracting. Can we, can we also, see the thing? Wonderful, good color, yeah. love it. Uh, but even better though, I didn't even realize the lid. Wait, I gotta do what the influencer that, hand. And do influencer it, do hand. It, come on, do it, come on, do come it, on. do it. Why, why? Come on, come on. Let's get digital. <laughs> six six Not nine. Let's get t- there it is. Nice. <laughs> six six nine. Nice. That's when you're uh, doing the six nine, uh, and there's a there's another spoon there. You know. <laughs> <laughs> when, when's it my turn? <laughs> So, so, their heads, the heads just next to you going, yeah, you do, you're doing great. <laughs> get, get that spa right there. Just, just moral support. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. I really like our time together. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. 
All right. Oh God. So yeah, let's uh, let's be let's just go and give advice yeah. now. Yeah, that's it. All right. Oh, is oh. there going to be a jingle? I don't know if there's going to be a jingle for this. We'll just do advice with Dobson. I don't know. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. Uh, so uh, I've made a Google form. It's in it's in my Discord. Um, Discord is you can oh you can find the Discord at where wherever it is. I don't know. You'll find it. it's in the show notes or on my Instagram or whatever. Anyway, uh, link the, uh, the link in bio. <laughs> it's in the description or the show notes or whatever. Anyway, uh, Lucy asks, "How do you deal with stress, anxiety, and nerves before a particular event?" Um. Hmm, that's a good question. Because I still struggle with this. Mm-hmm. I still struggle. When I go for for um, for auditions in person, which I haven't done in a few years, actually. I only just did one uh, for a commercial. Uh, no, it wasn't even a commercial. It was like uh, a, a flight crash reenactment TV show. Um, and I still got nervous about it. Mm. How do you deal yeah. with it? Yeah, so... Prior, like when I, when I mentioned before, I used to do like lots of like the acting and 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 whatnot, like short. Um, I did some like short film stuff, and then I did like lots of like live stage theater. That's where I was most profession, especially like improvisation. The first thing is is like this is the obvious given, but being as warmed up as possible. Similar, like when I was saying, like for video games, something goes wrong. I want to be as ready as possible. I want to be as limber as possible, yeah. relaxed, hydrated. I want to. Do I have all my stuff? Do I have everything in order? Do I have an extra copy of what I need? Do I have questions mm-hmm. to ask if they give me that space? Do I have all of my stuff so I can just be there? And then I usually take like uh, just a bit of time before. Like sometimes it's if I only have 10 minutes, I take that 10 minutes. If I only have an hour, I take an hour. And it's just like a, a self-talk moment. I would do this a lot before before streaming of reminding myself of A, if it's say, for example, we'll look at it through like auditioning or streaming of everyone in that room wants to be there for a different reason. They don't want to just see someone fail. They don't, they're not there to see you fail. They're not there to see you lose. In fact, they want to mm. see you win because the second you win and the second you succeed, you have made what they're doing so much easier and so much better and so much sweeter. And if you're going live for a show or something, no one's there to see someone just bomb on theater. And if you are, you are scum. But if you are there, you want to see a show. You want to see your friends succeed. You want to see them hit that high note and belt in front of everybody. You want to scream and cheer for them. So you knowing that, the, the fact that everyone is there for that same thing of, I want to have a good time. I want to see a win today. That mm. is like a thing I constantly remind myself. Um, but as, but I found, especially for auditions and job interviews and, and whatnot, was like, uh, it was a piece of advice I got um, from uh, my high school like acting teacher, uh, Cause I went to this like little acting school fun thing that that was their big focus. And they said, when you walk into an audition, that is your space, that is your audition, but it is also your time to just rehearse. And if you Mm. don't get this audition, that is your space to practice auditioning. That is Mm. yours. Own it. And whether you get it or not, it is, it is, it is your time And Mm. if you walk away from something and say you completely crash, burn, whatever, it goes fully silly, you you, you make an ass of yourself, you have done something that you didn't do prior, so it is your space and you get to own that space. And I remember I really struggled with that advice because I was applying for a, a theater program when I was younger and there was someone in the audition room with me who was super nervous. Like she was so like, just like, like losing her gourd about it because it was very high stakes for her. And for me, it was, I, I was very calm and, and she eventually like pacing around. Cause sometimes theater kids will just interact, which for me, uh, I'm just like, please don't just randomly talk to me. Um, <laughs> but, but she said like, why are you so calm? And I said, well, cause for this, for me, it's, it's just a chance to try. And, uh, whether I get it or not, it's a space to be there and it's, I'm going to own it as my own. And if I don't get it, then, you know, the worst thing is that they're going to say no, but the best thing is, is I'm, I'm what they need. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
And she, she said that and went in and uh, she walked out looking like quite cheery, like she got good news. <laughs> she but was someone, devastated. She came yeah, out. Absolutely <laughs> devastated. Tears she walked running in and just down. said, this is my space. And she, <laughs> um, but, but someone came to me after who was also in there and uh, that was just there listening to the conversation because they were chipping in every so often. I eventually said like, you know, I am a little nervous. And they said like, well, whatever, like you said, it's just your space. And then they let, mm. got up and went into their thing and they like threw that back at me in a very like harsh way of just like, whatever it's yours. Like as if I was like, and I sat there and I was like, this is like, that hurt my feelings, but that was the most affirming thing that dickhead could have done right there because it just <laughs> proved me right. Yeah. And like, yeah, and, yeah, then I yeah. went and, and I didn't get into the thing, but I had one of these most solid auditions. Like I had, cause I was relaxed. I sang, mm -hmm. um, uh, what's it? Uh, it's a song from Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, and I'm trying to remember uh, what it's called, but it's just this beautiful, like lament song. It was solid. It was fun. And then I got to sing my own song. So I sang Mr. Cellophane, which like, is just like a blast. Uh, yeah. Um, um, so, I love that. Yeah. So I John seed my Riley. Um, uh, <laughs> and, uh, no, it was just like, it was fun and good. And, and that's kind of just how I've looked at like, kind of everything is like, I have so much anxiety about change as a whole. And I don't know if that is like the fact that I have crippling anxiety or if that's a symptom of like ASD or whatever that is in me. But I know I struggle with like change and going into things and like mm. so many nerves, but just reminding myself of changes for the better. Everyone is there for a good purpose and whatever it is, I need to own it and make it my own because if I just throw it in there and I don't acknowledge the fact that this is for me or for others or for whatever purpose, then it, it's not going to matter in the grand scheme of things. And it should matter, but it should matter for good reasons, not ma reasons that are going to hurt me. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> I think for me, I I overthink things a lot with it. And really? I think that the I know it's surprising, <laughs> right? Um <laughs> and I think um the the things that have helped me um is is being uh, like so prepared that I have the confidence and trust that I know what I'm doing. So like mm. when I when I did live theater back in London um mm. you know we went we, on even on opening night we'd rehearsed so much that it didn't feel i didn't feel nervous about starting the play because we'd rehearsed so much and i knew that i was off book enough to be able to mm -hmm. to properly get the get the scene out and get the play out and 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 do it well yeah and the other part so i think it, it, you know if you have a presentation or something just like super just be really on learning it for as much as you can mm, and, and, totally. and rehearsing in front of people. Cause doing it on your own is one thing, but yep. like rehearsing it in front of a person, even if it's a family member and stuff, if they have like, if you write the presentation out and you have them just like, you know, help you learn your lines, basically it's the same concept, mm. whether you're an actor or not. Um, and then yeah. prepare, prepare and make sure that, you know, like, that you've got that presentation or your your audition or your whatever like committed to memory as best as possible which mm. i know as an actor is not always possible because like sometimes you get a script and it's less than 24 hours and that's when that's when i'm the most nervous is when it's less than a day you have you know you less uh less chance to be able to commit everything to memory properly and there's there's that mm. fear of, well certainly for me there's that fear of like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna get the lines wrong and it's gonna throw me <laughs> um <laughs> but what i've also found is breathing which Ooh, duh yeah. right obviously breathe but like the amount of times that i've uh caught myself in the middle of something that i was very nervous about and i'm just not breathing at all or i'm shallow breathing Mm -hmm. And and I think and it, and not breathing or not breathing properly means that you you're reducing the amount of oxygen your brain has, and yep. so you're setting yourself up for failure by not having your brain working at full capacity. So if you're able to practice just being able to, even if you write it into the script, because maybe you have to do that if you have a presentation or whatever putting in breaks of when do I breathe? Do I have a moment here? Okay, this is the part where I take three breaths, or this is the moment where I just take two deep breaths 
and then carry on. And you can always work that in to make it seem natural. It doesn't have to be like, excuse me for a moment. <gasps> okay. Move your head from the mic. Thank you. That is, that is an old, that is an, old, an old internet bit. deep cut. And I don't know if most people watching this are going to get that, but thank you for doing it. Nice. <laughs> um. I was, I was going to say, uh, like, uh, but before you continue, if I, if I may, um, also like when, when someone is watching someone as well, usually breathing syncs up. If you're not breathing and you're holding your breath, there is a high odd that somebody watching you is doing the same thing as you, as they will hold their breath and they will mirror you. And it's a thing and you can test it while you're watching shows. You'll notice your breath will change with the characters things. It's, it's just a consciousness thing. It's the same way our heart rates sync up when we're together mm -hmm. is your breathing will be mirrored. So if you're sitting there there and you're anxious about something and you just decide like i'm i'm gonna not breathe right now so are the people watching you and that feeling of discomfort is gonna build up just like yeah breathe breathe i completely agree that's a very that's that was the very well said dude very yeah. well said yeah 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 I, I i know that some people um mindfulness before they do things that are that are quite mm. anxiety driving helps them i've not been able to get mindfulness right so far usually it's like it's a bit too um i i think the 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 default of sitting still and and just closing your eyes and trying to focus on you know what you can hear and feel and whatever is a little bit too um difficult when my mind is racing too much but i know that there are other types of mindfulness where you can go for a walk and that's that is mindfulness Maybe look up guided meditations. I believe that there's guided meditations for just like walking. It doesn't have to be a sitting down one. Um, mm. So maybe that might be useful um, before the thing that you're doing. Yeah. Um, but if you're able to, if if the if the uh, racing thoughts are not too crazy, um, you know, try just doing some meditation beforehand. I think that might be useful. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, also box bo and going back to the breathing, just box breathing just before you do something is also really useful. So that's mm -hmm. breathing in for four seconds, holding it for four seconds, and then breathing out for eight seconds. And you just do that until you feel a little bit calmer. That's that's what's helped me as well when it comes to having like, because, you know, I, I have anxiety attacks and stuff like that. So it, 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 I think mm -hmm. those are the breathing, preparedness, and uh, the like the way that you frame what you're doing. I think mm -hmm. trying to reframe it so that if you don't do well, it's not a failure. It's an, a, an opportunity to, well, an opportunity to learn, an opportunity yeah. to grow in whatever. To grow, add it to your repertoire, say you did it. Like, honestly, that's it. Like, that's the best thing is I found if I've been anxious about like a stream or anything or even like rehearsing or auditioning like my favorite activity was to sit down with friends after and just say man i just did this thing and then just immediately like wow we're so proud of you like having that conversation just like hey you mm -hmm. just did a thing that's mm -hmm. awesome great job mm -hmm. doing the thing i love those conversations because for me like i found the reason i stopped doing theater as much and why i had to take a, a break from streaming was i don't enjoy the pathos of a performance in front of people i don't enjoy that as much as i enjoy the rehearsal process the building up the doing and like mm -hmm. the crafting um and so that's why like i really value like that kind of stuff so yeah no i completely yeah that's just well said that was nice yeah having you having supportive friends and stuff <laughs> yeah having supportive friends is another one as well like if you have a, mm -hmm. a, a good support system around you then then you're going to feel a lot less stressed out about the things that mm -hmm. you've got to get done um because because you know even if you don't do exactly as well as you'd hoped your friends are still going to be quite supportive of the stuff that you did and, and highlight the good things about what you did even if you don't like do a hundred percent there's still going to be things that that are worth uh praising in that and worth 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 cheering on so having oh. having really good supportive friends around you is is um is vital, I think. I would say. I'm very thankful for you. Aw, thanks, mate. I'm thankful for you as well. The, the Jake thanks. is is the is my biggest cheerleader and I, it makes me uncomfortable, but he likes that it makes me uncomfortable. Good. Absolutely. That's where the best comedy happens, baby. <laughs> <laughs> see? You see it? You just have a smoothie. 
but I got them again. No, I do. I still have some. Get- <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Take a sip. Take a sip so mm-hmm. I can say something funny. Um, d- 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 <laughs> ha! Ha! Got you. <laughs> Damn it! I choked, and I didn't make you choke. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right then. I think we're done, mate. Yeah. What do, What yeah. do you got going on? You got You got? Do you want to um, plug anything? Yeah, uh, there's this really cool guy uh, doing a podcast, the podcast of a generation. Uh, listen to that uh, on loop. If you don't, um, uh, I will take my water bottle and I will waterboard you for legal reasons. <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, like honestly, for, for me, I'm just uh, I'm just doing I'm just doing my best. I am I'm Jakey, and I like doing comic and arts and things. And I realize I don't know if I said that at the beginning or introduced myself, but you know, I'm gonna uh, do I'm gonna I'm no you you've, I'm gonna do a little intro for everybody beforehand. Ooh, You're all good. That's fun. I like that. But yeah. No. Uh, I don't I don't I don't have a ton going on right now. I'm just healing. Um. You know, support local drag. Uh, check out animal shelters and uh, be a cool person and good to yourself and your body and drink lots of water or again i swear i will <laughs> for legal reasons this is a joke get my big old water bottle <laughs> all right okay F- follow jakey boy arts on instagram and uh, and i'm sure that uh, his, his he will post things on there when he's doing certain things and you should go support him yeah, when he does those things absolutely oh, oh i will <laughs> i will be supported you by better. you <laughs> or else I'll get my... <laughs> All right. All right. Thanks, Jake. Hey. 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 He's gone. All right. I think I just broke my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, they're good. <laughs> they're good? All right. Okay. <laughs>